Hey YouTube, what is going on? Welcome to a very special video on Newcom's YouTube channel. We have the review of Logitech Craft. This ultra premium, low profile keyboard by Logitech. It's one of their most premium models, so I'm really excited to talk to you all about it. I've actually been using this for about a month after I, unbox after I shot the unboxing video that you just watched. So like I said, this is a low profile keyboard and you can see that when I do this, I, it's impossibly thin, it's super thin, and uh, the keys themselves are also not much, there's not much elevation to the keys themselves, and that's why you would call this keyboard a low profile keyboard. I'm just gonna show you a typing test so that you can also hear how the keys sound in an intense typing session. So take a listen and a look. All right, I very much enjoyed my time typing on this keyboard. You know, usually after a review period that I have with a membrane keyboard, because yes, this is a membrane keyboard, I just default back to my uh, mechanical keyboard. But with this one, I don't think I'm gonna do that. I think I'm just gonna keep using the craft because it's that good. One last point about the keys themselves. So it's got a scissor mechanism under each key, which makes it a lot less wobbly. And well, when I say a lot less wobbly, it means like there's no wobble, all right? You, you can try to move the keys, but they won't move. There's no wobble. And you can see a lot of wobble in some lower quality laptop keyboards, but uh, you're not gonna find that one here. No complaints about wobbliness of the keys. The keys feel great. The material of the keys, they don't get especially greasy. There's a lot of keys that uh, get very greasy after use. The chassis is made from hard plastic, but guys, it doesn't flex like a typical hard plastic keyboard would. It just doesn't flex. I mean, I'm not putting too much pressure on it, but normally with this kind of pressure, it would flex at least a little bit. But it's not your typical plastic. Like I said, it's hard plastic and it feels different. Even from matte plastic, it just, it just has a different texture to it. And I really like it, but then uh, really the probably the main reason why this keyboard has no flex is this metal portion up top, which makes the craft stand out from the MX keys or really any other keyboard. So let's talk about this part. Uh, well, it's metal. I mean, it's metal. <laughs> uh, but then this is this is really where things get interesting. This is the reason why you're buying this keyboard and not anything else. So this crown, as Logitech calls it, you can call it a dial, you can call it a knob or whatever. I'm gonna call it the crown, but it is essentially a contextually aware macro. It means that the function of the crown changes based on the app you're using it in. So if you go to the, the app for the Logitech uh, craft, which is the Logitech options app, it finds all the apps that are installed on your computer and it asks you to install different profiles for all the apps that you have on your computer to give the crown different functions based on the app. So when you, for example, when you switch between an app, the function of the crown changes. For example, if I'm in Premiere, the function of the, and I, and I have installed the profile for Premiere when I've installed uh, the Logitech Options app, the crown acts as a horizontal scroll. System wide, uh, it uses as a vol. It, it is used as a volume knob. But here's the thing: uh, the system wide function is not really useful. So I went inside the apps that I use frequently, and I really gave it the function that I would actually use. So, for example, in Safari. I actually use the knob or the, the, the crown, not to change the volume, but actually to switch between the tabs. This is a lot more of a useful feature for me than uh, the volume control, which I can actually just access using these three buttons here. Yeah, I actually forgot to mention, you have all sorts of different uh, shortcuts mapped to the uh, F row keys. So that's also nice. But yeah, uh, you can basically do whatever with this crown in whatever app that you frequently use, even if it doesn't have a 
uh, previously recognized profile by Logitech. So e even, even if it does, like for example, in Photoshop, uh, it allows you to, well, change the brush size if you have the brush selected, but if, if not, it switches between brightness control, saturation, vibrance, hue, and blend mode. And here's the final cool thing about uh, this crown. It is that based on the function that you are using it for, if that function is incremental, for example, volume or different layer styles cycling between the different layers, the rotation is notched. It's not completely smooth. It's notched like one, two, three, four, five, six, right? I mean, of course it's infinite, but I just, I just counted it to show you that it's notched and it makes a sound like this. With each turn, but then, but then yeah, this is when it gets interesting uh, for non incremental functions, for example, scrolling through your timeline in Premiere, scrubbing the playhead in a video and in, in your video player app, it makes a sound meaning that the magnets are either releasing themselves from the from the crown, or they're just realigning themselves. And it, um, it loses its notched nature. So it's just completely smooth. And it doesn't make any sound, which makes a lot more sense when you're talking about like infinite scrolls, like in your timeline, there's no levels, there's no increments to how you scroll your timeline. So it can only so it only makes sense uh, to change its uh, notched scroll or notched rotation style. There are two layers of turning. So there's one average turn like your regular turn, but you can also click on it and turn it and that's a totally different it's like a second crown that's that's a different function so essentially you have two surface dials contextually aware both programmable and also an extra button because yes this is a button now one last thing about the crown this is actually touch sensitive this is touch sensitive you you touch it and it brings up the the things that you can cycle through the, the the functions that you can cycle through per on a per app basis and you can touch it again not not press down on it you can touch it and cycle between the different functions once you are at the function that you want to change then you can use the crown with it it's those little touches that makes a, an expensive purchase like this worth it and of course i mean sure the aesthetics is also there uh this mouse has just been sitting here doing nothing this is when it actually does something look at that sick sick combo tell me you don't want that tell me you're not willing to pay a premium to get this aesthetic i, I mean maybe you aren't because it's it, it, it's expensive okay but uh, uh it's not a lot about what you need do you need this no <laughs> You don't, you don't need this, but when you get it and you see like the aesthetics that it gives you, it's inviting. Like when you get behind the computer and you see this, you see this combo, you don't need this. You can, you can work with a lot less than, than these like overkill uh, devices, but it's just a lot more inviting when you get something like this, a combo like this, or even just this one individually, it just invites you to use it because of the aesthetics, because of the, uh, the, the build quality, because of the features that are that are clearly product of time and effort. It's it's these things that uh, make you appreciate uh, the premium price that you paid to get something like this. But um, that was a random tangent. I'm actually going to get back to talking about uh, this particular keyboard and not give you a life lesson about how to spend your money. So anyways, speaking of the aesthetics, you've got uh, backlights on this keyboard, obviously. And here's another thing about why this keyboard, why the price of this keyboard is justified. It's one of those like extra touches that is like completely unnecessary, but it just makes you it just wows you when you see it in action. So I was genuinely amazed the first time I uh, found out about this feature. So the backlighting is smart. Meaning what? Meaning there are proximity sensors somewhere in this keyboard. It could be this, 
Maybe it's this, I don't know, but it doesn't make sense if this is the proximity sensor. Oh, uh, USB-C charging input, by the way. Nice. On and off switch, by the way, also. So this is probably the proximity, this is the proximity sensor, but I, what I don't understand is how does it work when I even like touch this part here and the backlight turns on. But yeah, it's like super smart and it knows when your hands are hovering above the keyboard. I, it, it can't be just here. I don't know how it works. I still don't know how it works after a month of using it. So uh, the light turns off after a little while, after like 10 seconds. And then when you do this, or like just even doing this, the light turns on. It's crazy. But this, this is what I told you about inviting you to use it. So that's pretty much all the nice things that I can say about this keyboard. Now I do have a one small gripe with it. Let me just turn off the lights completely unnecessary. And this is actually the part that uh, I have a gripe with. No, not the backlight. Well, actually it is related to the backlight. It's the battery life uh, of this keyboard. The battery life with the backlight on is not great. I mean, it still works for a week, which is like, you don't really worry about it when you're working with it, but it's still way less than a AA powered uh, keyboard that I'm typically used to using. So there's a very nice Logitech branded USB-C cable that you can use to charge the device. But here's the thing, uh, the smart backlight works even in daylight. Like if it was meant to be really smart, I wish it had like ambient light sensors as well, but it doesn't have an ambient light sensor, which means that it works all the time. Now, one thing you can do is that you can turn it off every day and turn it on every night so that it'll actually kick in when you need it. But that's an extra layer of work that you just, you just don't do, right? So uh, if you wanna use the smart backlight feature, you gotta be prepared to charge the, charge the keyboard like every, every week or week and a half. But if you don't use the, the, the backlight, uh, the, the, the battery life is so much better. So the backlight drains the battery life quite a bit and that is pretty much the only gripe that I have with this keyboard. Now, also there has been some inconsistencies sometimes with the app. The keyboard works fine, but the app itself, sometimes like it, it takes a little bit to switch between the, uh, the different contextually aware macros that it has, uh, but that really hasn't been a big issue. It happens sometimes. I hope uh, they can fix that with an update, but again, it's, it's really not a big issue. You also get this Logitech unifying receiver in the box. Now, the word unifying is actually really important. This is not your old dongle that, that comes with any old my, mouse or keyboard. This is a very different beast. So let's say you lose uh, your dongle. You don't really need to worry about it. If it's any other brand and you lose the dongle for it, you're screwed because that's the only dongle that is paired with that particular computer peripheral and you can't really connect it with any other dongle. So that mouse or keyboard or really, I don't know, headset or anything, you can't really use it anymore. It's just useless. But with the Logitech unifying receiver or devices that are compatible with Logitech unifying receiver, which is pretty much all wireless Logitech devices, you can connect it to a new one. You just buy a new Logitech unifying receiver and pair it to that. And here's the other thing. Um, this is actually uh, the dongle that came with the MX Anywhere 3. And I'm not using it, but I am using the MX Anywhere 3 with uh, the, the one that came with the Craft. So the unifying receiver that came with the Craft is connected to my Mac Mini. Uh, which is connected to the Craft as well as the MX Anywhere 3. So I'm not using the Bluetooth function on the MX Anywhere 3. So the unifying receiver not only gives you uh, a bit more peace of mind in case you lose it, it also makes you not use up any more uh, USB ports than one. So if you have, I don't know, five different Logitech peripherals, five different mice, keyboard, headsets, and other Logitech devices that come with a Logitech unifying receiver, you only need to use one. So that's also just one other nice thing about this keyboard. I, I do have to add one last thing. Who is this keyboard for? If you're a creator, Logitech is uh, focusing on creators with this keyboard. They have the names Premiere, Photoshop, Illustrator, and all the other Adobe Creative Suites plastered on the back of the, the box of the Logitech Craft. 
So yes, this is a creator focused keyboard, but if you're not a creator and you just enjoy uh, using a really tactile volume knob, I wouldn't blame you if you if you wanted to get this keyboard, but be aware because th this is an expensive keyboard. This is an expensive keyboard, but for the ones who want it, it's not just a keyboard. It's like it's almost like a piece of furniture in a way that invites you to use it, invites you to look at it, especially if you have an MX Master 3 or an MX Anywhere 3, which I have right here. So it gives a really nice look to your setup and it just looks like really inviting to use and of course very high quality uh, to, to touch and a really good typing experience. So I can't say enough nice things about it. But if you don't want this extra overkill feature on the top of the keyboard, there's of course the option to buy the MX keys, also made by Logitech. A video on that is gonna come soon on the channel, so make sure you're subscribed. But uh, I can't exactly tell you whether or not this keyboard is worth it for you. If you think this is overkill, go with the MX keys. It's pretty much the same keyboard, just except for the, for the crown up top. Other than that, I, I will leave it here. I really, really hope you guys enjoyed this video and uh, I hope I made you uh, make a purchasing decision. Make sure to give a like to this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to Newcom for the MX Keys review for the Logitech MX Anywhere 3 review and a lot more coming very soon. Uh, we are focused on computer peripherals, so if that's your thing, if watching uh, mouse reviews, keyboard reviews, headset reviews and all that is your thing, make sure that you are subscribed to Newcom. But well, that's been it. I'll see you guys next time.